Hello and welcome back my friends. Well, the sun is headed down. It's the evening. One of my favorite times to get out into the garden and get things done, especially planting. Now, if you are plugging in transplants, for example, the evening's the best time to do that in my opinion, because you get an extra eight to 10 hours versus if you were to plant out in the morning, where those plants have time to adjust without going into shock, getting that strong afternoon sun beating down on them. Tonight, I'm actually gonna be plugging in some seeds wanted to bring you guys along because I think you might find what I'm doing a bit interesting. So come on along with me over to the corn patch. That's where I'll be working today. So here you see we got a nice corn patch going, a little block of corn. We've got five different rows spaced out about two feet apart and each planting of corn about a foot apart. Now there's two or three corn coming up in each spot. That's because I double seeded just to give myself uh, the best opportunity to make sure we don't miss a single spot. Then I'm just gonna cut out the weaker of the two corn plants and leave myself with the strongest corn. But what I'm gonna be doing today is actually turning this standard little patch of corn here into a three sisters garden, which really mimics the whole idea of a food forest style garden by maximizing this space and producing the most amount of food that we can. So since I'm gonna be out here watering this plot on a regular basis, getting this corn to grow, I might as well grow some other crops that can work as companion plants to the corn and maximize the potential of this area. So with a Three Sisters garden, the standard is to plant a climbing bean a couple inches away from the corn stalk, and it's gonna climb up the corn stalk as its vertical trellis, and then in between these rows to plant squash. Now you can plant a winter squash or a summer squash. The difference being that winter squash tends to uh, vine out and run and spread out quite a bit a distance from where the original planting begins. And a summer squash is gonna create more of a bush, usually about four feet by four feet. So even though we've got two foot rows here, you can definitely do either style. Um, just a little bit of guiding the plants as they grow to fit in. But once those squash start to really take off, these corn are gonna be at least a couple feet tall, and those beans already now have a starting point to start running up the corn. So you don't wanna plant the corn and the beans and the squash all at the same time, but rather you wanna plant the corn first, usually wait about a couple weeks. When your corn's three to four inches tall, you can then plant your beans and your squash, or you can wait another week even to plant the squash. I'm gonna do both the beans and the squash today. Uh, we're good to go here. So the beans I'll be planting next to the corn is the Kentucky Wonder, and this is a vining climbing bean. So just as with the squash, there is a difference. There's bush beans, there's climbing beans. You definitely wanna grow climbing beans next to the corn so it can climb up the stalks of corn. A side benefit as it's winding its way around the corn is it helps to secure the corn in case you got big heavy winds coming. It'll actually help to keep them standing straight up. So that's cool side benefit as well. Now, the squash I'll be planting is a winter squash, and this is the kabocha. One of our favorite squashes to grow. It grows very well around here, and being a winter squash, it is gonna vine and spread out quite a bit. So eventually, it'll even come out of the bed. We'll be removing this fence once things get better established. This is really here just to keep the dogs and chickens out while everything's getting going. So when planting your beans, it can be very beneficial to inoculate the beans first. Now, the great benefit to inoculating your beans is that Beans have a beneficial relationship with a certain bacteria found in the soil known as rhizobium. It's not always present. Now, if you've inoculated beans or peas or vetch in the past, then more than likely you're gonna have some of this bacteria in the plot that you're growing in and you won't have to re-inoculate. But you might wanna do that just as an added backup anyway. Inoculation is easy, very low cost. But what this creates when the legumes and this bacteria are present is it allows for the atmospheric nitrogen to be pulled in by the plant and then converted into nitrogen little root nodules that are gonna to help to feed the bean itself and also drop some of those root nodules into the bed and feed the other surrounding plants. So it's a really cool process that takes place and we definitely wanna to try to facilitate that the best that we can. So a quick inoculation, uh, really easy to do. If you're not familiar, I have made a video on the past on how it's done and I'll drop a link to that video below this video so you can check that out. When I'm walking in a new garden plot like this, I like to lay down some boards or something just to help distribute my weight so I'm not creating some big sinkholes in when I'm stepping in here. So first things first, we're missing a corn plant over here. I can actually see a kernel here, but maybe 
I can transplant one of these other corn here that's growing hopefully without hurting the other plant there we go that should work Now I'm going to go around real quick and remove the weakest of each one of these little plantings. See there, only one grew, so it's good I had two there. As you can see, we had really good germination. There's another single one. Look at the difference here. Got this little dinky plant and a nice big one, so I'm glad to have choice there. Now that we've reduced the planting down to one corn in each spot, we're going to plug in the beans. So I'm just plugging these in a couple inches away from the stock. Then you can pour a little bit of this inoculant in there too. Just get some more of that beneficial bacteria in there. Now that we got the one row done, I can plug in the squash. About every four feet is good. And then we'll just repeat that process for the next row here. Now I'm just plugging in one bean because I'm actually running a little low. But you might want to plug in two beans. Again, give yourself a backup. And they'll do fine with one corn stock. I do have some wing beans. Because it looks like I'm going to run low on this patch. So I'll plug some of those in here as well. grab those wing beans. Now I had these wing beans soaking since last night, 24 hours, just in regular water. So this is kind of an experiment, see how they grow here with the corn. They can really take off and climb a lot larger than these corn stalks, so we'll go ahead and dump those in the inoculant. Continue plugging in. So this is very much like a food forest garden in the way that you're utilizing the different layers here. The purpose of the squash is to help to shade out the soil and work as a living mulch while providing a nice quality food for consumption. The beans add in nitrogen and can climb up so you got your vining layer and the corn itself works as a tree would work in a food forest design. And one of the greatest things about a corn, squash, and bean planting is that together they make a complete meal. You've got the corn, which is a good carbohydrate. You have the beans, which are high in protein. And then you have the squash, which are high in other vitamins and minerals. Um, so you put all those together in one meal and you've got yourself a complete meal. So a complete garden, food forest design, 
producing as much food as you can in a limited amount of space and complete food when you pull your harvest. So. I'm just dropping in. Usually I'm hitting about five seeds, so we'll thin it out to two or three. I've got an abundance of these kabocha squash seeds. We actually have a huge Ziploc that we collected from our garden. But this is a seed pack I had from a couple years back, actually 2017. So I wanted to utilize these. That's important to note when planting your corn, doing a planting like this, you want a block, you want a patch, not just a single row or a double row. And that's because corn is wind pollinated. Although you can hand pollinate, so you don't have to do a patch or a block, but you can, you can do a row and then you would basically grab the tassels of the corn and go around and grab the other tassels and spread that pollen. But if you don't want to have to go through all that, I might even do that anyways, to be honest with you. But you can just do four or five rows is good. It doesn't have to be that wide either. What do I have here? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I have about 13 in the largest row. And this kind of curves this bed. So this smallest row here, we probably have about nine. But when you plant the corn in a block like this, they help support each other so they don't topple over as easy and they pollinate each other. You know, this style of garden is a lot of fun. I think it's one that if you've got kids who you're trying to introduce to gardening, this would be a great way to do it. There's a lot that they can learn out of one simple little garden plot when you teach them this. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned, this is called the Three Sisters Gardening Method. It goes all the way back to Native Americans and the way that they would maximize their space and do their plantings. And it doesn't have to be string beans and squash. It could be calabash gourd as your ground cover and wing beans here or any other vining crop. But we're sticking to tradition here and shout out to the Native Americans. Or you can even do a variety of squash and beans. Maybe you do some summer, some winter squash varieties. A good summer squash like zucchini. And then a winter squash like the kabocha. Just to mix it up. This is very easy to do. Water everything in real good here. As always, if you're not already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I will be updating you on this project as well as with all the other projects we have growing on around here. I'm here in Northern California, the Bay Area, Zone 9B. We tend to be ahead. Whatever you see me doing here, this is real time. You can get going on this and it's not too late. Get your corn planted a couple weeks later, do what you saw me do today. And you'll have your own Three Sisters garden. If you found the video helpful or fun to watch, I always appreciate when you smash those thumbs for us. Helps the channel quite a bit. Let's us know uh, what type of content you guys prefer to see. It's my pleasure to share with you guys these techniques. And I truly do appreciate you tuning in. I want to leave you guys on a positive note and just tell you that I truly believe with everything that we're going through right now in the world, the shutdown situation that's occurring. 
great days are coming. Wonderful days are ahead of us. Abundance like we've never seen before is coming. New technologies that make our lives so much better are going to be coming soon. More peace, more love. A lot of goodness. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments below. No matter what, I recommend staying positive, finding positive activities, keep yourself busy. Like I mentioned in the past, try not to tune in to negative influencers, whether it's on the television or the internet. Surround yourself with positivity. Take care of your body. Take care of your health. Eat well. One of the best ways you can do that is to have a daily smoothie. You can pack all the nutrition in for the day in one meal, one drink. And you don't have to think about it anymore. So if you're not already, I highly recommend starting to make smoothies. All you need is some bananas, some blueberries, some greens, and a few different powders and other things that you can add in. I share with you guys a lot of what I do nutritional wise on my other channel Plant Based Eats. Check that channel out if that might interest you. I'll leave a link as well to that channel below. Hope to see you guys there. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Have yourself a wonderful rest of your evening and I'll be talking to you again real soon.